Follies. Follies is a musical with music and lyrics by Stephen Sondheim and a book by James Goldman. The story concerns a reunion in a crumbling Broadway theater, scheduled for demolition, of the past performers of the Weissman's Follies, a musical review, based on the Ziegfeld Follies, that played in that theater between the world wars. It focuses on two couples, Buddy and Sally Durant Plummer and Benjamin and Phyllis Rogers Stone, who are attending the reunion. Sally and Phyllis were showgirls in the Follies. Both couples are deeply unhappy with their marriages. Buddy, a traveling salesman, is having an affair with a girl on the road, Sally is still as much in love with Ben as she was years ago, and Ben is so self-absorbed that Phyllis feels emotionally abandoned. Several of the former showgirls perform their old numbers, sometimes accompanied by the ghosts of their former selves. The musical numbers in the show have been interpreted as pastiches of the styles of the leading Broadway composers of the 1920s and 30s, and sometimes as parodies of specific songs. The Broadway production opened on April 4, 1971, directed by Harold Prince and Michael Bennett, and with choreography by Bennett. The musical was nominated for 11 Tony Awards and won seven. The original production, the most costly performed on Broadway to that date, ran for over 500 performances but ultimately lost its entire investment. The musical has had a number of major revivals, and several of its songs have become standards, including Broadway Baby, I'm Still Here, Too Many Mornings. Could I Leave You? And Losing My Mind. After the failure of Do I Hear a Waltz? 1965, for which he had written the lyrics to Richard Rogers' music, Sondheim decided that he would henceforth work only on projects where he could write both the music and lyrics himself. He asked author and playwright James Goldman to join him as bookwriter for a new musical. Inspired by a New York Times article about a gathering of former showgirls from the Ziegfeld Follies, they decided upon a story about ex-showgirls. Originally titled The Girls Upstairs, the musical was originally to be produced by David Merrick and Leland Hayward in late 1967, but the plans ultimately fell through, and Stuart Ostrow became the producer, with Joseph Hardy to direct. These plans also did not work out, and finally Harold Prince, who had worked previously with Sondheim, became the producer and director. He had agreed to work on The Girls Upstairs if Sondheim would agree to work on company, Michael Bennett the young choreographer of Company, was also brought on to the project. It was Prince who changed the title to Follies. He was intrigued by the psychology of the reunion of old chorus dancers and loved the play on the word Follies. In 1971, on the soon-to-be-demolished stage of the Weissman Theater, a reunion is being held to honor the Weissman's Follies show's past, and the beautiful chorus girls who performed there every year between the two world wars. The once resplendent theater is now little but planks and scaffolding prologue, Overture. As the ghosts of the young showgirls slowly drift through the theater, a major domo enters with his entourage of waiters and waitresses. They pass through the spectral showgirls without seeing them. Sally Durant Plummer, blonde, petite, sweet faced, and at 49, still remarkably like the girl she was 30 years ago, a former Weisman girl, is the first guest to arrive. Her ghostly youthful counterpart moves towards her. Phyllis Rogers Stone, a stylish and elegant woman also arrives with her husband Ben, a renowned philanthropist and politician. As their younger counterparts approach them, Phyllis comments to Ben about their past. He feigns a lack of interest, there is an underlying tension in their relationship. As more guests arrive, Sally's husband, Buddy, enters. He is a salesman, in his early fifties, appealing and lively, whose smiles cover inner disappointment. Finally, Weissman enters to greet his guests. Roscoe, the old master of ceremonies, introduces the former showgirls, beautiful girls. Former Weissman performers at the reunion include Max and Stella Deems, who lost their radio jobs and became store owners in Miami, Solange Lovett, a coquette, who is vibrant and flirtatious even at 66, Hattie Walker, who has outlived five younger husbands, Vincent and Vanessa, former dancers who know Wown and Arthur Murray franchise, Heidi Schiller, for whom Franz Lehar once wrote a waltz, or was it Oscar Strauss? Facts never interest her, what matters is the song, and Carlotta Campion, a film star who has embraced life and benefited from every experience. As the guests reminisce, the stories of Ben, Phyllis, Buddy and Sally unfold. Phyllis and Sally were roommates while in the Follies, and Ben and Buddy were best friends at school in New York. When Sally sees Ben, her former lover, she greets him self-consciously, don't look at me. Buddy and Phyllis join their spouses in the foursome reminisces about the old days of their courtship in the theater, 
their memories vividly coming to life in the apparitions of their young counterparts, waiting for the girls upstairs. Each of the four is shaken at the realization of how life has changed them. Elsewhere, Willie Wheeler, Portly, in his 60s, cartwheels for a photographer. Emily and Theodore Whitman, ex vaudevillians in their 70s, perform an old routine, The Rain on the Roof. Solange proves she is still fashionable at what she claims is 66, ah, Paris, and Hattie Walker performs Harold Show's topping number, Broadway Baby. Buddy warns Phyllis that Sally is still in love with Ben, and she is shaken by how the past threatens to repeat itself. Sally is awed by Ben's apparently glamorous life, but Ben wonders if he made the right choices and considers how things might have been, the road you didn't take. Sally tells Ben how her days have been spent with Buddy, trying to convince him and herself, in Buddy's eyes. But it is clear that Sally is still in love with Ben, even though their affair ended badly when Ben decided to marry Phyllis. She shakes loose from the memory and begins to dance with Ben, who is touched by the memory of the Sally he once cast aside. Phyllis interrupts this tender moment and has a biting encounter with Sally. Before she has a chance to really let loose, they are both called on to participate in another performance, Stella Deems and the ex corns line up to perform an old number, Who's That Woman? as they are mirrored by their younger selves. Afterward, Phyllis and Ben angrily discuss their lives in relationship, which has become numb and emotionless. Sally is bitter and has never been happy with Buddy, although he has always adored her. She accuses him of having affairs while he is on the road, and he admits he has a steady girlfriend, Margie, in another town, but always returns home. Carlotta amuses a throng of admirers with a tale of how her dramatic solo was cut from the follies because the audience found it humorous, transforming it as she sings it into a toast to her own hard-won survival, I'm still here. Ben confides to Sally that his life is empty. She yearns for him to hold her, but young Sally slips between them and the three move together, too many mornings. Ben, caught in the passion of memories, kisses Sally as Buddy watches from the shadows. Sally thinks this is a sign that the two will finally get married, and Ben is about to protest until Sally interrupts him with a kiss and runs off to gather her things, thinking that the two will leave together. Buddy leaves the shadows furious, and fantasizes about the girl he should have married, Margie, who loves him and makes him feel like a somebody, but bitterly concludes he does not love her back, the right girl. He tells Sally that he's done, but she is lost in a fantasy world, and tells him that Ben has asked her to marry him. Buddy tells her she must be either crazy or drunk, but he's already supported Sally through rehab clinics and mental hospitals and can't take any more. Ben drunkenly propositions Carlotta, with whom he once had a fling, but she has a young lover and coolly turns him down. Heidi Schiller, joined by her younger counterpart, performs one more kiss, her aged voice a stark contrast to the sparkling coloratura of her younger self. Phyllis kisses a waiter and confesses to him that she had always wanted a son. She then tells Ben that their marriage can't continue the way it has been. Ben replies by saying that he wants a divorce, and Phyllis assumes the request is due to his love for Sally. Ben denies this, but still wants Phyllis out. Angry and hurt, Phyllis considers whether to grant his request, could I leave you? Phyllis begins wondering at her younger self, who worked so hard to become the socialite that Ben needed. Ben yells at his younger self for not appreciating all the work that Phyllis did. Both buddies enter to confront the Bens about how they stole Sally. Sally and her younger self enter and Ben firmly tells Sally they've never loved her. All the voices begin speaking and yelling at each other. Suddenly, at the peak of madness and confusion, the couples are engulfed by their follies, which transform the rundown theater into a fantastical loveland, an extravaganza even more grand and opulent than the gaudiest Weissman confection, the place where lovers are always young and beautiful, and everyone lives only for love. Sally. Phyllis, Ben and Buddy show their real and emotional lives in a sort of group nervous breakdown. What follows is a series of musical numbers performed by the principal characters, each exploring their biggest desires. The two younger couples sing in counterpoint of their hopes for the future, you're gonna love tomorrow slash love will see us through. Buddy then appears, dressed in plaid baggy pants, garish jacket and a shiny derby hat, and performs a high-energy vaudeville routine depicting how he ice caught between his love for Sally and Margie's love for him the God Why Don't You Love Me blues. Sally appears next, dressed as a torch singer, singing of her passion for Ben from the past, and her obsession with him now, losing my mind. In a jazzy dance number, accompanied by a squadron of chorus boys, Phyllis reflects on the two sides of her personality, one naive and passionate and the other jaded and sophisticated in her desire to combine them, the story of Lucy and Jesse.
resplendent in top hat and tails, then begins to offer his devil-may-care philosophy, live, laugh, love, but stumbles and anxiously calls to the conductor for the lyrics, as he frantically tries to keep going. Ben becomes frenzied, while the dancing ensemble continues as if nothing was wrong. Amidst the deafening discord, Ben screams at all the figures from his past and collapses as he cries out for Phyllis. Loveland has dissolved back into the reality of the crumbling and half-demolished theater, Dawn is approaching. Ben admits to Phyllis's admiration for her, and Phyllis shushes him and helps Ben regain his dignity before they leave. After exiting, Buddy escorts the emotionally devastated Sally back to their hotel with the promise to work things out later. Their ghostly younger selves appear, watching them go. The younger Ben and Buddy softly call to their girls upstairs, and the follies end. Source, Follies score does not equal some production substitute ah, but underneath when the actress portraying Phyllis is not primarily a dancer. Does not equal does not equal omitted from some productions. Note, this is the original song list from the original Broadway production in 1971. Variations are discussed in versions. Songs cut prior to the Broadway premiere include, All Things Bright and Beautiful, used in the prologue, Can That Boy Foxtrot, Who Could Be Blue? Little White House, So Many People, It Wasn't Meant to Happen, Pleasant Little Kingdom, and Uptown Downtown. The musical numbers are, but underneath, replacing the story of Lucy and Jesse, Country House, Make the Most of Your Music, replacing Live, Laugh, Love, Social Dancing and a new version of Loveland have been incorporated into various productions. Hal Prince said, Follies examines obsessive behavior, neurosis and self-indulgence more microscopically than anything I know of. Bernadette Peters quoted Sondheim on the character of Sally, he said early on that, Sally, is off balance, to put it mildly. He thinks she's very neurotic, and she is very neurotic, so he said to me, congratulations. She's crazy. Martin Gottfried wrote, the concept behind Follies is theater nostalgia, representing the rose-colored glasses through which we face the fact of age. The show is conceived in ghostliness. At its very start, ghosts of Follies showgirls stalk the stage, mythic giants in winged, feathered, black and white opulence. Similarly, ghosts of 20s shows slip through the evening as the characters try desperately to regain their youth through recreations of their performance and inane theater sentiments of their past. Joanne Gordon, author and chair and artistic director, theater, at California State University, Long Beach, wrote Follies is in part an affectionate look at American musical theater between the two world wars and provides Sondheim with an opportunity to use the traditional conventions of the genre to reveal the hollowness and falsity of his character's dreams and illusions. The emotional high generated by the reunion of the Follies girls ultimately gives way to anger, disappointment, and a weary resignation to reality. Follies contains two scores, the Follies pastiche numbers and the book numbers. Some of the Follies numbers imitate the style of particular composers of the early 20th century, Losing My Mind is in the style of a George Gershwin ballad The Man I Love. Sondheim noted that the song The Guy Why Don't You Love Me Blues is another generic pastiche, vaudeville music for chases and low comics, but with a patter lyric, I tried to give it the sardonic knowingness of Lawrence Hart or Frank Lucer. Loveland, the final musical sequence, that consumed the last half hour of the original production, is akin to an imaginary 1941 Siegfeld Follies sequence, with Sally, Phyllis, Ben and Buddy performing like comics and torch singers from a Broadway of yore. Loveland features a string of vaudeville-style numbers, reflecting the leading character's emotional problems, before returning to the theater for the end of the reunion party. The four characters are whisked into a dream show in which each acts out his or her own principal folly. Goldman continued to revise the book of the musical right up to his death, which occurred shortly before the 1998 Paper Mill Playhouse production. Sondheim, too, has added and removed songs that he judged to be problematic in various productions. Ted Chapin explains, Today, Follies is rarely performed wise in exactly the same version. James Goldman's widow made the observation that the show has morphed throughout its entire life, the London production had new songs and dialogue. The Paper Mill Playhouse production used some elements from London but stayed close to the original. The 2001 Roundabout Broadway revival, the first major production following Goldman's death in 1998, was again a combination of previous versions. Major changes were made for the original production in London, which attempted to establish a lighter tone and favored a happier ending than the original Broadway production. According to Joanne Gordon, when Follies opened in London, it had an entirely different, and significantly more optimistic, 
tone. Goldman's revised book offered some small improvements over the original. According to Sondheim, the producer Cameron McIntosh asked for changes for the 1987 London production. I was reluctantly happy to comply, my only serious balk being at his request that I cut the road you didn't take. I saw no reason not to try new things, knowing we could always revert to the original, which we eventually did. The net result was four new songs, for reasons which I've forgotten. I rewrote Loveland for the London production. There were only four showgirls in this version, and each one carried a shepherd's crook with a letter of the alphabet on it. The musical was written in one act, and the original director, Prince, did not want an intermission, while the co-director, Bennett, wanted two acts. It was originally performed in one act. The 1987 West End, 2005 Barrington Stage Company, the 2001 Broadway revival and Kennedy Center 2011 productions where it performed in two acts. However, the August 23, 2011 Broadway preview performance was performed without an intermission. By opening the 2011 Broadway revival was performed with the intermission, in two acts. The 2017 National Theatre production is performed without an interval. Follies had its pre-Broadway tryout at the Colonial Theatre, Boston, from February 20 through March 20, 1971. Follies premiered on Broadway on April 4, 1971 at the Winter Garden Theatre. It was directed by Harold Prince and Michael Bennett, with choreography by Bennett, scenic design by Boris Aronson, costumes by Florence Klotz, and lighting by Taryn Musser. It starred Alexis Smith, Phyllis, John McMartin, Ben, Dorothy Collins, Sally, Jean Nelson, Buddy, along with several veterans of the Broadway and vaudeville stage. The supporting role of Carlotta was created by Yvonne de Carlo, and usually is given to a well-known veteran performer who can belt out a song. Other notable performers in the original productions were Fifi Dorsey as Solange Lafitte, Justine Johnston as Heidi Schiller, Mary McCarty as Stella Deems, Arnold Moss as Dimitri Weissman, Ethel Shutta as Hattie Walker, and Marcy Stringer and Charles Welch as Emily and Theodore Whitman. The show closed on July 1, 1972 after 522 performances and 12 previews. According to Variety, the production was a total financial failure, with a cumulative loss of $792,000. Prince planned to present the musical on the West Coast and then on a national tour. However, the show did not do well in its Los Angeles engagement and plans for a tour ended. Frank Rich, for many years the chief drama critic for The New York Times, had first garnered attention, while an undergraduate at Harvard University, with a lengthy essay for the Harvard Crimson about the show, which he had seen during its pre-Broadway run in Boston. He predicted that the show eventually would achieve recognition as a Broadway classic. Rich later wrote that audiences at the original production were baffled and restless. For commercial reasons, the cast album was cut from two LPs to one early in production. Most songs were therefore heavily abridged and several were left entirely unrecorded. According to Craig Zadon, it's generally felt that, Prince made a mistake by giving the recording rights of Follies to Capitol Records, which in order to squeeze the unusually long score onto one disc, mutilated the songs by condensing some and omitting others. Chapin confirms this, alas, final word came from Capitol that they would not go for two records. Dick Jones, now had to propose cuts throughout the score in consultation with Steve. One more kiss was omitted from the final release but was restored for CD release. Chapin relates that there was one song that Dick Jones, producer of the cast album, didn't want to include on the album but which Steve Sondheim most definitely did. The song was One More Kiss, and the compromise was that if there was time, it would be recorded, even if Jones couldn't promise it would end up on the album. It did get recorded but didn't make its way onto the album until the CD reissue years later. The musical was produced at The Money, St. Louis, Missouri in July 1972 and then transferred to the Schubert Theater, Century City, California, running from July 22, 1972 through October 1, 1972. It was directed by Prince and starred Dorothy Collins, Sally, replaced by Janet Blair, Alexis Smith, Phyllis, John McMartin, Ben, replaced by Edward Winter, Jean Nelson, Buddy, and Yvonne DiCarlo, Carlotta reprising their original roles. The production was the premier attraction at the newly constructed 1,800-seat theater, which, coincidentally, was itself raised 30 years later, in 2002, in order to build a new office building, thus mirroring the Follies plot line upon which the musical is based. A full production ran at the Forum Theater, within Shaw, England, from April 30, 1985. 
Directed by Howard Lloyd Lewis. Designed by Chris Kinman. Costumes by Charles Cusick Smith. Lighting by Tim Ratton. Musical direction by Simon Lowe. And choreographed by Paul Carrison. The cast included Mary Miller, Sally Durant Plummer, Liz Eisen, Young Sally, Meg Johnson, Stella Deems, Leigh Want, Max Deems, Betty Benfield, Heidi Schiller, Joseph Powell, Roscoe, Chili Boucher, Hattie Walker, Shirley Greenwood, Emily Whitman, Brian Burden, Theodore Whitman, Monica Dell, Solange Lafitte, Jeannie Harris, Carlotta Campion, Josephine Blake, Phyllis Rogers Stone, Kevin Colson, Ben, Debbie Snook, Young Phyllis, Stephen Hale, Young Ben, Bill Bradley, Buddy Plummer, Paul Burton, Young Buddy, David's Case, Dimitri Weissman, Mitch Sebastian, Young Vincent, Kim Ismay, Young Vanessa, Lorraine Croft, Young Stella, and Merrill Richardson, Young Heidi. A staged concert at Avery Fisher Hall, Lincoln Center, was performed on September 6 and 7, 1985. The concert starred Barbara Cook, Sally, George Hearn, Ben, Mandy Patinkin, Buddy, and Lee Remick, Phyllis, and featured Carol Burnett, Carlotta, Betty Comden, Emily, Adolf Green, Theodore, Liliana Mondavecki, Solange Lafitte, Elaine Stritch, Hattie Walker, Phyllis Newman, Stella Deans, Jim Walton, Young Buddy, Howard McGillan, Young Ben, Liz Calloway, Young Sally, Daisy Prince, Young Phyllis, Andre Gregory, Dimitri, Arthur Rubin, Roscoe, and Leecha Albanese, Heidi Schiller. Rich, in his review, noted that as performed at Avery Fisher Hall, the score emerged as an original whole in which the modern music and mock vintage tunes constantly comment on each other, much as the script's action unfolds simultaneously in 1971, the year of the reunion, and 1941, the year the Follies disbanded. Among the reasons the concert was staged was to provide an opportunity to record the entire score. The resulting album was more complete than the original cast album. However, director Herbert Ross took some liberties in adapting the book and score for the concert format. Dance music was changed, songs were given false endings, new dialogue was spoken, reprises were added, and Patinkin was allowed to sing the God Why Don't You Love Me blues as a solo instead of a trio with two chorus girls. Portions of the concert were seen by audiences worldwide in the televised documentary about the Making Off concert, also released on videotape and DVD, of Follies in Concert. The musical played in the West End at the Shaftesbury Theatre on July 21, 1987 and closed on February 4, 1989 after 644 performances. The producer was Cameron McIntosh, direction was by Mike Ockrent, with choreography by Bob Avian and design by Maria Bjornsson. The cast featured Diana Rigg, Phyllis, Daniel Massey, Ben, Julia McKenzie, Sally, David Healy, Buddy, Linda Barron, Leonard Sachs, Maria Charles, Pearl Carr, and Teddy Johnson. Dolores Gray was praised as Carlotta, continuing to perform after breaking her ankle, although in a reduced version of the part. During the run, Eartha Kitt replaced Gray, sparking somewhat of a comeback. She went on to perform her own one woman show at the Shaftesbury Theatre to sell out houses for three weeks from March 18, 1989, after Follies closed. Other cast replacements included Millicent Martin as Phyllis. Julia McKenzie returned to the production for the final four performances. The book was extensively reworked by James Goldman, with Sondheim's cooperation and also given an intermission. The producer Cameron McIntosh did not like that there was no change in the characters from beginning to end. In the London production, the characters come to understand each other. Sondheim did not think the London script was as good as the original. However, he thought that it was wonderful that, at the end of the first act, the principal characters recognized their younger selves and were able to acknowledge them throughout the last 30 minutes of the piece. Sunheim wrote four new songs, Country House, Replacing the Road You Didn't Take, Loveland, Replacing the Song of the Same Title, Ah, But Underneath, Replacing the Story of Lucy and Jesse, For the Non-Dancer Diana Rigg, and Make the Most of Your Music, Replacing Life, Laugh, Love. Critics who had seen the production in New York, such as Frank Rich, found it substantially more upbeat and lacking in the atmosphere it had originally possessed. According to the Associated Press, AP, reviewer, a revised version of the Broadway hit Follies received a standing ovation from its opening night audience and raves from British critics, who said the show was worth a 16-year wait. The AP quoted Michael Coveney of the Financial Times, who wrote, Follies is a great deal more than a camp love in for old burlesque buffs and Sondheim aficionados.
In the New York Times the critic Francis X. Kleins wrote, The initial critics' reviews ranged from unqualified raves to some doubts whether the reworked book of James Goldman is up to the inventiveness of Sondheim songs. A truly fantastic evening, the Financial Times concluded, while the London Daily News said, The musical is inspired, and the Times described the evening as a wonderful idea for a show which has failed to grow into a story. The Times critic, Irving Wardell, also said, It is not much of a story and whatever possibilities it may have had in theory are scuppered by James Goldman's book, a blend of lifeless small talk, bitching and dreadful gags. Kleins further commented, in part, the show is a tribute to musical stage history, in which the 57-year-old Mr. Dot Sondheim is steeped, for he first learned songwriting at the knee of Oscar Hammerstein II and became the acknowledged master songwriter who bridged past musical stage romance into the modern musical era of irony and neurosis. Follies is a blend of both and the new production is rounded out with production numbers celebrating love's simple hope for young lovers, its extravagant fantasies for Ziegfeld aficionados, and its fresh lesson for the graying principles. This production was also recorded on two CDs and was the first full recording. Follies was voted ninth in a BBC Radio 2 listener poll of the UK's nation's number one essential musicals. Michigan Opera Theatre, MOT was the first major American opera company to present Follies as part of their main stage repertoire, running from October 21, 1988 through November 6. The Mo production starred Nancy Dassault, Sally, John Charles Kelly, Buddy, Juliet Prowse, Phyllis, and Ron Raines, Ben, Edie Adams, Carlotta, Thelma Lee, Hattie, and Dennis Grimaldi, Vincent. A production also ran from March to April 1995 at the Theater Under the Stars, Houston, Texas and in April to May 1995 at the Fifth Avenue Theater, Seattle with Constance Towers, Phyllis, Judy Kay, Sally, Edie Adams, Denise Darcel, Virginia Mayo and Karen Morrow, Carlotta. The 1998 Paper Mill Playhouse production, Milburn, New Jersey, was directed by Robert Johansson with choreography by Jerry Mitchell and star Donna McKenney, Sally. Dehody, Phyllis, Lawrence Cattard, Ben, Tony Roberts, Buddy, Kay Ballard, Hattie, Eddie Bracken, Weissman, and Ann Miller, Carlotta. Phyllis Newman and Liliana Montevecchi reprised the roles they played in the Lincoln Center production. Ah, but underneath was substituted for the story of Lucy and Jesse in order to accommodate non-dancer Hody. This production received a full-length recording on two CDs, including not only the entire score as originally written, but a lengthy appendix of songs cut from the original production in tryouts. Julianne Boy directed a fully staged version of Follies in 2005 by the Barrington Stage Company, Massachusetts, in June to July 2005. Principal cast included Kim Crosby, Sally, Leslie Denniston, Phyllis, Jeff McCarthy, Ben, Laura Teeter, Buddy, Joy Franz, Solange, Marnie Nixon, Heidi, and Donna McKenney, Carlotta. Stephen Sondheim attended one of the performances. The Dublin concert was held in May 1996 at the National Concert Hall. Directed by Michael Scott. The cast included Lorna Luft, Millicent Martin, Mary Miller, Dave Willits, Trevor Jones, Brian Smith, Alex Sharp, Christine Scary, Aidan Conway, and Edna Markey. A concert was held at Theatre Royal, Drury Lane, London, on December 8, 1996 and broadcast on BBC Radio 2 on February 15, 1997. The cast starred Julia McKenzie, Sally, Donna McKenney, Phyllis, Dennis Quilly, Ben, and Ron Moody, Buddy. This show recreated the original Broadway score. Follies was performed in concert at the Sydney Opera House with the Sydney Symphony Orchestra in February 1998 as the highlight of the Sydney gay and lesbian Mardi Gras and had three performances. It followed a similar presentation at the 1995 Melbourne Festival of Arts. The show starred Tony Lamond, Sally, Jill Perryman, Judy Kennelly, Terence Donovan, Ron Hadrick, Todd McKenney, and Leonie Page. A Broadway revival opened at the Belasco Theatre on April 5, 2001 and closed on July 14, 2001 after 117 performances and 32 previews. This roundabout theatre limited engagement had been expected to close on September 30, 2001. Directed by Matthew Warkus with choreography by Kathleen Marshall, it starred Blythe Danner, Phyllis, Judith Ivey, Sally, Treat Williams, Buddy, Gregory Harrison, Ben, Marge Champion, Polly Bergen, Carlotta, 
Joan Roberts, the original Laurie from the original Broadway production of Oklahoma, later replaced by Marnie Nixon, Larry Rakin, Roscoe, and an assortment of famous names from the past. Former MGM and one-time Broadway star Betty Garrett, best known to younger audiences for her television work, played Hattie. It was significantly stripped down, earlier productions had featured extravagant sets and costumes, and was not a success critically. According to an article in The Hollywood Reporter, almost every performance of the show played to a full house, more often than not to standing room only. Tickets always were tough to come by. The reason the final curtain came down Saturday was because, being a production by the Roundabout Theatre Company a subscription-based not-for-profit theatre company, it was presented under special equity terms, with its actors paid a minimal fee. To extend the show, it would have been necessary to negotiate new contracts with the entire company, because of the Belasco's limited seating, it wasn't deemed financially feasible to do so. Theatre writer and historian John Kenrick wrote, the bad news is that this Follies is a dramatic and conceptual failure. The good news is that it also features some of the most exciting musical moments Broadway has seen in several seasons. Since you don't get those moments from the production, the book or the leads, that leaves the featured ensemble, and in Follies that amounts to a small army, Marge Champion and Donald Sadler are endearing as the old hoofers. I dare you not to fall in love with Betty Garrett's understated Broadway baby, you just want to pick her up and hug her. Polly Bergen stops everything cold with I'm Still Here, bringing a rare degree of introspection to a song that is too often a mere belt fest. Tee emotional high point comes when Joan Roberts sings One More Kiss. A production was mounted at London's Royal Festival Hall in a limited engagement. After previews from August 3, 2002, it opened officially on August 6, and closed on August 31, 2002. Paul Carrison directed, and the cast starred David Durham as Ben, Catherine Evans as Sally, Louise Gold as Phyllis, Julia Goss as Heidi and Henry Goodman as Buddy. Variety singer and performer Joan Savage sang Broadway Baby. This production conducted by Julian Kelly featured the original Broadway score. Follies was part of LA's reprise series, and it was housed at the Wadsworth Theatre, presented as a staged concert, running from June 15 to June 23, 2002. The production was directed by Arthur Allen Seidelman, set designed by Ray Clausen. Lighting design by Tom Ruzica, costumes by Randy Gardell, sound design by Philip G. Allen, choreography by Kay Cole, musical director Gerald Sternbach. The production starred Bob Gunton, Ben, Warren Berlinger, Dimitri Weissman, Patty Duke, Phyllis, Vicky Carr, Sally, Harry Gruner, Buddy, Carol Cook, Hattie, Carol Lawrence, Vanessa, Ken Page, Roscoe, Liz Torres, Stella, Amanda McBroom. Solange, Grover Dale, Vincent, Donna McKenney, Carlotta, Carol Swarbrick, Christine, Stella Stevens, Dee Dee, Mary Jo Catlett, Emily, Justine Johnston, Heidi, Jean Louisa Kelly, Young Sally, Austin Miller, Young Buddy, Tia Riebling, Young Phyllis, Kevin Early, Young Ben, Abby Feldman, Young Stella, Barbara Kyofalo, Young Heidi, Trevor Brackney, Young Vincent, Melissa Driscoll, Young Vanessa, Stephen Reed, Kevin, and Billy Barnes, Theodore. Hal Linden was originally going to play Ben, but left because he was cast in the Broadway revival of Cabaret as Herr Schultz. Tom Bosley was also originally cast as Dimitri Weissman. New York City Center's Encores. Great American Musicals in Concert Series featured Follies as its 40th production for six performances in February 2007 inches a sold-out semi-staged concert. The cast starred Donna Murphy, Phyllis, Victoria Clark, Sally, Victor Garber, Ben, and Michael McGrath, Buddy. Christine Baronski played Carlotta, and Lucina Mara sang Heidi. The cast also included Ann Rogers, Joanne Worley, and Philip Bosco. The director and choreographer was Casey Nicola. This production used the original text and the Loveland lyrics performed in the 1987 London production. The Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts production at the Eisenhower Theater started previews on May 7, 2011, with an official opening on May 21, and closed on June 19, 2011. The cast starred Bernadette Peters as Sally, Jen Maxwell as Phyllis, Elaine Page as Carlotta, Linda Lavin as Hattie, Ron Rains as Ben and Danny Burstein as Buddy. The production was directed by Eric Schaefer, with choreography by Warren Carlyle. Costumes by Greg Barnes, set by Derek McLean and lighting by Natasha Katz. Also featured were Rosalind Elias as Heidi, Regine as Solange, 
Susan Watson as Emily, and Terry White as Stella. The budget was reported to be $7.3 million. The production played to 95% capacity. Reviews were mixed, with Ben Brantley of the New York Times writing, It wasn't until the second act that I fell in love all over again with Follies. Peter Marks of the Washington Post wrote that the revival takes an audience halfway to paradise. He praised a broodingly luminous Jan Maxwell and Burstein's hapless one-time stage door Johnny, as well as the show's final 20 minutes, when we ascend with the main characters into an ironic vaudeville dreamscape of assorted neuroses, the most intoxicating articulation of the musical's Loveland sequence that I've ever seen. Variety gave a very favorable review to the lavish and entirely satisfying production, saying that Schaefer directs in methodical fashion, building progressively to a crescendo exactly as Sondheim does with so many of his stirring melodies. Several show-stopping routines are provided by choreographer Warren Carlyle. Terry Teachout of the Wall Street Journal noted that one of the signal achievements of this Follies is that it succeeds in entangling each and every strand of the show's naughty plot. Mr. Schaefer is clearly unafraid of the darkness of Follies, so much so that the first act is bitter enough to sting. Yet he and Warren Carlyle, just as clearly revel in the richness of the knowing pastiche songs with which Mr. Sondheim evokes the popular music of the Paracra. The production transferred to Broadway at the Marquis Theatre in a limited engagement starting previews on August 7, 2011, with the official opening on September 12, and closing on January 22, 2012 after 151 performances and 38 previews. The four principal performers reprised their roles, as well as Paige as Carlotta. Jane Howdy Shell as Hattie, Mary Beth Peel as Solange Lovett and Don Korea as Theodore joined the Broadway cast. A two-disc cast album of this production was recorded by PS Classics and was released on November 29, 2011. Brantley reviewed the Broadway revival for the New York Times, writing, Somewhere along the road from Washington to Broadway, the Kennedy Center production of Follies picked up a pulse. I am happy to report that since then, Miss Peters has connected with her inner frump, Mr. Raines has found the brittle skeleton within his solid flesh, and Ms. Maxwell and Mr. Burstein have only improved. Two new additions to the cast, Jane Howdy Shell and Mary Beth Peel, are terrific. This production has taken on the glint of crystalline sharpness. The production's run was extended, and its grosses exceeded expectations, but it did not recoup its investment. The Broadway production won the Drama League Award, Distinguished Production of a Musical Revival for 2011 12, and the Drama Desk Award for Outstanding Revival of a Musical. Outstanding Actor in a Musical, Burstein, and Outstanding Costume Design, Barnes. Out of seven Tony Award nominations, including Best Revival of a Musical, it won only one, for Barnes Costumes. The 2011 Broadway and Kennedy Center production transferred to the Amundsen Theater, Los Angeles, California, in a limited engagement, from May 3, 2012 through June 9. The majority of the Broadway cast reprised their roles, with the exception of Bernadette Peters, who had prior concert commitments and was replaced by Victoria Clark in the role of Sally, a role she has previously played in New York. Other new cast members included Carol Neblett as Heidi, Sammy Williams as Theodore and Ababata Tinde as Max. For its first production in France, Follies was presented at the Toulon Opera House in March, 2013. This English-language production, using the full original orchestration, was directed by Olivier Benizek and conducted by David Charles Abel. The cast featured Charlotte Page, Sally, Liz Robertson, Phyllis, Graham Bickley, Ben, Jerome Pradun, Buddy, Nicole Quasi, Carlotta, Julia Sutton, Hattie, and Francis Fee, Young Buddy. A concert version at the Melbourne Recital Centre Staged with a full 23-piece orchestra and Australian actors Philip Guast, Ben, David Hobson, Buddy, Lisa McCoon, Sally, Ann Wood, Phyllis, Rowan Witt, Young Buddy, Sophie Wright, Young Sally, Nancy Hayes, Hattie, Deborah Byrne, Carlotta, and Queenie Van de Zandt, Stella. The production was directed by Tyron Park and produced by Storyboard Entertainment. A London revival was performed in the Olivier Theatre at the National Theatre. 22nd of August until November 4, 2017, later extended to January 3, 2018, as extensions are common practice at the National Theatre. The production was directed by Dominic Cook, choreographed by Bill Deemer and starred Peter Forbes as Buddy, Imelda Staunton as Sally, Janie D as Phyllis, Philip Quast as Ben and Tracy Bennett as Carlotta. Full casting was announced on 9 June. This production notably goes back to the original run of a one-act performance. 
The production was broadcast live to cinemas worldwide on 16th of November through the National Theatre Live program. The production will return to the Olivier Theatre from 14 February until March 26, 2019. Janie D and Peter Forbes will return as Phyllis and Buddy, while Joanna Riding and Alexander Hansen will replace Staunton and Quas to Sally and Ben. Bennett is also confirmed to reprise her Olivier-nominated performance. A cast recording was also confirmed and is yet to be released. The 2017 production was nominated for 10 Lawrence Olivier Awards and won two for Best Musical Revival and Best Costume Design, by Vicky Mortimer. The characters and original cast in the foreword to Everything Was Possible, Frank Rich wrote, From the start, critics have been divided about follies, passionately pro or con but rare lie in the fence. Is it really a great musical, or merely the greatest of all cult musicals? Chapin, P11, Ted Chapin wrote, Taken as a whole. The collection of reviews Follies received was as rangy as possible. Chapin, p. 300, in his The New York Times review of the original Broadway production, Clive Barnes wrote, It is stylish, innovative, it has some of the best lyrics I have ever encountered, and above all it is a serious attempt to deal with a musical form. Barnes also called the story shallow and sometimes words a joy even when his music sends shivers of indifference up your spine. Walter Kerr wrote in the New York Times about the original production, Follies is intermissionless and exhausting, an extravaganza that becomes so tedious. Because its extravagances have nothing to do with its pebble of a plot. On the other hand, Martin Gottfried wrote, Follies is truly awesome and, if it is not consistently good, it is always great. Time magazine wrote about the original Broadway production, at its worst moments, Follies is mannered and pretentious overreaching for significance. At its best moments, and there are many, it is the most imaginative and original new musical that Broadway has seen in years. Frank Rich, in reviewing the 1985 concert in the New York Times, wrote, Friday's performance made the case that this Broadway musical can take its place among our musical theater's very finest achievements. Ben Brantley, reviewing the 1998 Paper Mill Playhouse production in the New York Times, concluded that it was a fine, Heartfelt production, which confirms Follies as a landmark musical and a work of art. The Time magazine reviewer wrote of the 2001 Broadway revival, even in its more modest incarnation, Follies has, no question, the best score on Broadway. He noted, though, that I'm sorry the cast was reduced from 52 to 38, the orchestra from 26 players to 14. To appreciate the revival, you must buy into James Goldman's book which is peddling a panoramically bleak take on marriage. Finally, he wrote, But Follies never makes fun of the honorable musical tradition to which it belongs. The show and the score have a double vision, simultaneously squinting at the messes people make of their lives and wide-eyed at the lingering grace and lift of the music they want to hear. Sondheim songs aren't parodies or deconstructions, they are evocations that recognize the power of a love song. In 1971 or 2001, Follies validates the legend that a Broadway show can be an event worth dressing up for. Brantley, reviewing the 2007 Encores concert for the New York Times, wrote, I have never felt the splendid sadness of Follies as acutely as I did watching the emotionally transparent concert production, at almost any moment, to look at the faces of any of the principal performers, is to be aware of people both bewitched and wounded by the contemplation of who they used to be. When they sing, in voices layered with ambivalence and danger and longing, it is clear that it is their past selves whom they are serenading. There have been five recordings of Follies released, the original 1971 Broadway cast album, Follies in Concert, Avery Fisher Hall, 1985, the original London production, 1987, and the Paper Mill Playhouse, 1998. The cast recording of the 2011 Broadway revival, by P.S. Classics was officially released on November 29, 2011, and also was in pre-sale prior to the store release. P.S. Classics co-founder Tommy Krasker said, We've never had the kind of reaction that we've had for Follies. Not only has it already outsold every other album at our website, but the steady stream of emails from customers has been amazing. This recording includes extended segments of the show's dialogue. The Theatermania.com reviewer wrote that the result is an album that more so than any of the other existing recordings, allows listeners to re-experience the heartbreaking collision of past and present that's at the core of the piece. 
The recording of the 2011 revival was nominated for a Grammy Award in the musical theater album category. The 2017 London revival cast was recorded after the production closed in January 2018, and will be released later in the year. Tony Award winning playwright and Oscar nominated screenwriter John Logan has expressed interest in writing a film adaptation of Follies. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.